Today I am back with another exciting material study and I'll be showing you how to create this amazing looking corroded copper material. You will learn how to create complex shading networks including state vectors, curvature nodes and occlusion nodes to bring it all together. And if you are new to my channel, I am creating VFX content mainly in look dev lighting and shading. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Alright, so now let's get started with this material study. As you can see, we do have this corroded copper material and we will be setting it up in three different sections. So the first one will be the copper itself as a base material. Then we will be working on like a little dust which is on the top, like here and there. And then we will also be focusing on the corrosion which is this, uh, this teal, blue, purple color which is all over the place. As you can see, we already have our base material assigned which is the standard surface shader. We do have our asset which is this beautiful dragon and we do have a light rig supplied. All these files will be accessible through my Patreon source files here so make sure to check them out if you want to follow along. Let's start off by setting up the base parameters. So let's go to the base color and pick some kind of uh, copper-like color. We can also use a color picker here to pick a copper from our reference. And then make sure you enable mat metalness by setting this value to 1 and you get a very reflective uh, copper material here. We can also change the roughness to get a base roughness which is closer to our reference and I can see it's already a bit too orange uh, but we will be dialing that in in a little bit. I will now create several noises to break up the uniform base color texture so I'll be creating a cell noise and a regular noise and I will multiply them together to create some nice little material. And the output of the multiply will feed into a RGB ramp because that way I can use the grayscale values to control a color ramp from that. And see the output goes into the input here and then the output of that goes into my base color. And the ramp itself now will be able to control the color. So if I just pick the same kind of uh, copper color we picked before. So the first one is the cell noise. I want to set this to cell and then play around with that. So let's visualize that by hitting isolate selected. You can see this is our pattern. And let's just add a few different octaves to get more detail in that and also increase the scale. And then we check the noise. This is our noise pattern, which is also already pretty good. So we can just play around with that. And you can see now the multiply looks kind of like that. So what I want to do is I want to lift the black so we have just a not so contrasty mask. So I'll be creating an AI range after the multiply and then reconnect the output of, of, the, of the range to the ramp itself. And now let's just lift up the black level so we don't have this contrast. And now let's have a look at our ramp and make sure to set the type of the ramp to custom and then you will see that we have this breaking up pattern here which is exactly what we want. You can now see our copper has these darker spots which is quite nice. I also want to create a stronger noise pattern itself so I will be creating a, uh, another multiply um, after the range with the same input noise like that. All right, so this already looks like a nice breakup for our base color. What we still need to do is we need to change the colors based on the curvature of the material. You can see in our reference here that these um, protruded areas, like these folds in the jacket, they look a little bit lighter and they also less rough. So we need to do a few things. So first of all, let's just change the color based on curvature and make this a little bit brighter. So what I want to do, I want to make, make room here on the right for a AI color correct. And this allows me to drive the input color based on a mask. So if I plug these guys in, you would now see if I go to my solo mode that I now can change the color of this. What I want to do though, I want to drive it with a curvature. So I'm creating this AI curvature node and the output of that will go into the mask section of my color correct. And in the curvature itself, I can play around with the radius to make this um, reach more areas like that. And I can also play with multiply to really push out those values. If you want more finer control, you can boost up the samples to get a tighter match, but this is up to you. So now if I go back to the color correct, and if I now change my gamma, you will see that only these areas which are protruding, which uh, get a different color. You can see I can add values, I can multiply those values. So there's lots of control to get exactly the look you need. And you can now see that these edges are getting a little bit more lighter, which is nice. I think the curvature is a bit too tight, so I'm playing around with the radius to just boost that up a little bit more. 
Let's visualize that. You can see this is my radius. And you can see overall it gets just a little bit brighter. And now I also want to do another thing. I want to use the inverse curvature. So I can shift D to duplicate the node and I can change the output from convex to concave and create another AI color crack like that. Now what's happening is we are we are using the, the crevices essentially to, um, to color correct something. So I'm doing the same thing, looking through the solo mode, and this time I want to go darker though. So I'm reducing the gamma. You can see now these areas now get a lot darker and the metal will be also a little bit darker as well. And we can change the color to be maybe a little bit greenish. Not too much, but just a little bit to get some kind of a color differentiation. And you can already see now in these crevices, we're getting a little bit darker and we're just breaking up our base material. And we are still just working on the copper material. And you can see just by doing this, it, or it looks way more organic than just this constant base color. So it's very important to break up your base metals. Next up, we want to play with the roughness and the roughness will be driven by a noise like a very broad noise to just get some detail all over the place. So plugging that to specular roughness, you will see that we get these patches now. Um, and obviously black means um, shiny and white means rough. So we want to lift the blacks so it's not super black and super shiny. We just want to do have a little bit of that. And then we also don't want to go fully white on the roughness. So we want something between 0.8 and 0.2 or 0.4, something like that. If I visualize this, we need more detail. So I'm lifting up the octaves maybe and adding a little bit of distortion just to get a bit more organic shaping. And you can now see that we have some breakup, nothing too crazy, but it's all over. We see some variation of the noise. What I wanna do next is um, dial the similar thing as we did just now with the, with the two curvatures, concave and um, convex. So I'm again, creating a color correct hooking that up, noise goes in the input, and then we just do a work on the concave for now. So doing the same thing, the output of that goes into the specular roughness like so. And in here I can just add, so I want the crevices to be very rough as if there's like lots of dust collected. So I'm just lifting the values in the crevices and I'm shift D the color correct to create a new one and I'm hooking that up as well. And the output of that, as before, goes to spec roughness. And then for the mask input, we use now the other curvature node, which is the, uh, the con convex one, which is just the, um, the outside edges. So I'm masking that in. And instead of adding stuff, we want to multiply stuff to make these edges darker so they look a little bit shinier. So uh, you will now see that these edges are very shiny and polished, whereas the concave parts are rougher. So this is now the base metal layer, which I think looks already very good. It's maybe a bit too clean, but we will break it up right now. So the first thing what I want to do, I want to create a mix, a shader mixer, delete the shading engine and hook up shader two to our copper material. And then the output of that goes to the surface shader. So right now we do have uh, no shader plugged in for shader one. What I want to do is create a new surface shader. Um, I always use the AI standard surface shader. It's always a bit more up to date because it ships with Arnold instead of um, the, the Maya version. And you can see now the top material now is our, it will be our dust shader and it will be mixed in um, with this material mixer here. You can see one is copper and zero is shader one. So right now we are fully on shader one. What I wanna do, I just wanna pick something brownish, um, nothing too saturated. And this will then be our um, dust material, which will be just mixed in on the on the y axis. So let's uh, increase the fuse roughness for for dust effects, and then increase the specular roughness to get very like something very dusty looking. And we can break it break up the basic look with a noise. But for now, let's just work on the mixing in. So what I want to do for that is I want to create uh, the state vector node. Uh, which will read geometry samples. And I want to pick um, the normal geometric normal, I think. And I want to create a range, AI range like so. And the out value goes in the input. And then I want to pick the green channel, which is important because the green is the Y axis of the normal map. And if I now look at my range and visualize that, you will see that if I go to R is from the right, green is from the top and blue is from the front which will give you all three axes of your model. You can see now the y-axis is essentially like a occlusion from the top. And I want to use that to drive the mixing of my dust shader. As you can see, our materials are now flipped. So you have two options to do. You can 
either swap the shader inputs or you can use an AI complement which will just um, reverse your materials or you can use an inverse. There's actually a few more ways to do this. So let's just hook this up and now you should see that our copper is at the bottom and we get the dust on the top. And I think this is already a nice effect because you, you can see that there's something collecting on the top which already helps a lot to break up this material. And for now this is all I want to do because this is already getting very close to the look of this. All we're missing now is this greenish teal corrosion section. And again, what I want to do for that is create a new mix material. So we just do a mix shader, delete the shading engine, and the output of that goes into our input for shader material one, and then hook that up to the surface shader like so. And then our material two, it's another AI standard surface shader, which will plug into the shader input of the mix two like that. And then we can swap over the mix to one. So we're just working on the bottom piece here. And we just rename this to corrosion or whatever you want to rename it to. Let's just say corro. And this color is kind of like a bluish tealish material, right? So I can try to pick the color from, from our pure rough window here. Maybe something very dark like that. And again, it's always a bit tricky with the picking, but it's very easy to change. You just go over the color wheel and you just pick something a bit more closer to what it is. And again, we will be breaking that up as well. For now, we just live with that as it is. Something like that works already pretty well. And now again, we need to mix it in. And we'll be using two things for this. Um, one will be the occlusion. So, and we will be using occlusion and curvature together. They are very similar in a sense, um, but they give us slightly different results. So the first thing is using an AI ambient occlusion. Let's get rid of this and hook that up into our mix like that. And you can already see the occlusion is doing uh, its things. We want to invert the color. So now the inside is essentially occluded and we can change the far clipping. It's essentially the radius. So everything now, which is close to itself will get occluded, which will get our teal material. You can see though that our colors are a little bit um, washed out and we do need strong colors to So AI range to the rescue. And it's quite easy. We can just reduce the input input max, reduce that number, and then we get a stronger input for the whites. And if I flip back, you will see that we get this this uh, corrosion already and this already looks pretty good actually we just need to um, a, a, do a few different things but I think this works pretty well and we do want to use the curvature as well so what I want to do I want to use the AI max which essentially picks the brighter value from its input so if input one is brighter it will pick that if input two is brighter it will pick that so for here, I'm using the curvature and a probably a better way would be to reuse your existing curvature nodes. Um, but for, for this tutorial, I'll just create a new one. It's probably more efficient if you reuse the existing ones. Um, all right, so in this curvature node here, what I wanna do, let's first connect that up. I want to switch it to concave and have it very tight. So we don't want it to be excessively everywhere. We just want a very small radius like that. So we are forcing it to be in all the crevices because this is where corrosion would happen the f at first. So you just want to very tight around these crevices. And you can see if we mix this now, um, wh wherever we are missing occlusion, we are maxing it in with the curvature. And you can see everywhere we get these um, this patterns. And this is based because of we're using the curvature itself. And what I want to do now is I want to um, use our occlusion to drive the color of our corro corrosion material. So I'm using an AI color correct, and I'm picking up the blue color we picked for our corro corrosion material, and I'm just plugging that back into my base color like that. And then I'm using the output of our occlusion map as a mask. And now I can essentially drive the color of the occluded areas. And you can see now we have a different color on the inside, which is quite nice because essentially we can now maybe desaturate the outside a little bit and then increase the saturation on these inner parts. And this will just help to break up the overall look and shape of everything because you, you want to vary things quite a lot. And what I always also like to do is using an AI noise. It's a nice trick, AI noise, and then use an RGB ramp and hook up the noise to the input and the out color goes into my color correct. If I now look at the noise, if I, if I now look at the ramp, it's completely black. 
set it to custom mode and then change your colors from the RAM to this blue which we had before. And this way we have actually a nice breakup because we can now um, sample different colors based, uh, based on our input um, grayscale values. You can now see I'm going a little bit lighter. You can see now we have this nice variation and the noise can be broken up using octaves which will add a, give us more finer detail as if there's some growth pattern. And then the ramp will um, break it up accordingly. And I think our, our base color is a little bit too yellow. So let's just try to go a little bit more into the, um, into the orange copper colors. So now let's render a high quality image of this and see what we need to adjust. By comparing the render to our reference, I can see that our occlusion is not going for, far enough. You can see in our reference image, it's, it's pretty much covering the whole image. So we definitely need to extend our occlusion masking. And what I want to do, I want to break up the overall pattern like I want to multiply a mask um, so our corroded areas are not just a uniform mask like I just want to break it up a little bit more. So now let's have a look at our occlusion mask here and if I go to the max shader here you can see where our mask is affecting our corrosion. So the occlusion is essentially the driver of that so I want to increase the far clip to have more areas affected by this and you can see now if I go back to our render, you will see that everything is a bit more covered by this material. We do want to play around with this a little bit more as well. So we just push these values even further. And this is already getting very close to that. I still think our um, color for the corrosion material is too simple. We need to break it up more. So I will be increasing our scale for our mask. Which, which, which should help us bring us more white into, this, into the mix. And I also want to increase the white material a little bit more. So we get a stronger breakup. Overall, the mask is a bit too much. So I'm just reducing the overall um, value. So I'm not going fully one. So I'm just going to 0.6 maybe to just have it a little bit on here. And then as I said, I want to break it up. So I'm creating a cell noise because it has these distinct cell patterns. And if I use um, cell one and I increase the octaves and I multiply that with the max result here, I multiply, hook these two nodes up together, you will see that um, we are breaking up our initial um, mask. So let's see what happens. Um, this is our mask and after the multiply, it's broken up like that. Obviously it's the pattern is not large enough, uh, not small enough. So I'm just uh, reducing the scale maybe to 10. And we get this smaller breakup here. And the multiply now looks very broken up. We can probably go a little bit more even and increase the density to have um, a little bit less of the blacks in here. And maybe go on 15 for the scale and see what our result looks like now. And you can see it's broken up quite nicely. If I go back here, you will see that our pattern is definitely breaking up now and it's not just a uniform color. Let's just play around with these values to get the look. On top of that, I'm also multiplying it with another noise to further break up the shapes. Now that I'm happy with the corrosion, I want to still play around with our dust, which is on the, our top layer here, which is driven by this range. You can see by reducing our um, input max, we get more dust on these top areas. And you will see that it will get very dusty and very rough looking. Um, I think our color is probably a little bit too, too bright. So what I want to do, go into the, our um, dust shader and just reduce our base color for that. And then adjust our um, state vector effect so it's not so apparent everywhere. So it's just broken up a little bit. I feel now that our results are pretty close to our reference. A few things which could just be changed is probably the saturation of the blue is still a bit too much. And probably the our color is not fully hitting the same color as our statue here on the on the folds of, this, of, the, of the jacket here. But all in all, this, the principles work pretty well. We do have our dust coverings, we do have our corrosion, and we do have the copper material. I hope you enjoyed this more in-depth tutorial about Arnold material studies. I will be creating more content like this. Just let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and I hope I will see you in the next tutorial.